Presidential candidate Ron DeSantis has outlined his pro-crypto agenda in contrast to the Biden administration. Folks, crypto will be a ballot item in the 2024 election. And Cristiano Ronaldo has been sued for promoting Binance. We also have a new applicant in the Bitcoin spot ETF race, and this applicant is coming out of Europe. And crypto custody firm Copper launches institutional trading platform for tokenized securities. We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, big news coming out of Florida for Governor Ron DeSantis, who is, of course, a presidential candidate. And the 2024 election is going to be very interesting, folks. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we got candidates who are pro-crypto, of course, and crypto is going to be a ballot item. So here's what the Washington Examiner is reporting. Here's the headline. DeSantis outlines pro-crypto agenda in contrast to Biden's SEC judge, jury, and executioner. So the TLDR of this, and I'll give you the details, but the TLDR is uh, Ron DeSantis is calling on the Biden administration, saying they're being very heavy-handed on the crypto industry, and that is sending crypto overseas, sending jobs overseas. And of course, this is what we've been talking about on the podcast, folks, uh, that the United States needs to get its act together, pass comprehensive regulations, rein in scumbag regulator Gary Genser, allow the innovation and the jobs to stay here and provide clarity. So folks, uh, let me give you the details. Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida denounced lawsuits that the Biden administration Securities and Exchange Commission filed against crypto industry uh, and vowed to defend digital assets should he be elected president. Under Joe Biden, the SEC has gone after companies through several lawsuits. DeSantis told the Washington Examiner this week that his administration would reverse course as he laid out his agenda for the cryptocurrency realm. Folks, incredibly bullish, right? Needless to say, incredibly bullish. We have crypto on the ballot now, folks. We're seeing multiple presidential candidates, not only in the Republican side, but also in the Democrat. Here's what Alexander Grieve of um, Paradigm, he's government affairs at Paradigm, said. Three major presidential candidates, two political parties, three pro-crypto agendas paying attention yet. Folks, it's amazing where crypto is going, right? And of course, it's disrupting money, it's disrupting payments, it's disrupting transactions and the way we do business. It's the next layer on top of the internet. So you can't ignore it. It's not a fad. It's not something that's coming here. It's you know a flash in the pan. Oh, it's a hot topic now and then it's gone the next day. That's not what this is. This is just like the internet. It's here to stay. It's how we're gonna do business get on board or be disrupted. And we are seeing globally, many countries are embracing this and opening up their doors. So here's a quote from Ron DeSantis. Biden's SEC thinks it's judge, jury, and executioner on crypto while the Fed continues to press ahead on a CBDC, DeSantis said, referencing research into a central bank digital currency. Innovation is fleeing abroad thanks to their regulatory shakedowns, he continued. I will defend the right of Americans to hold digital assets without government interference. Crypto rules should be made by Congress, not regulatory fiefdoms, if I'm saying that right, or fiefdoms, I apologize, I'm butchering that word, that blindly police an industry they don't understand. Strong words there, and I agree with him. And once again, he's not the only one. Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, RFK Jr. as well has spoken out about this. Folks, I'm excited. Crypto is only going to grow in adoption and dominance in the markets, folks. It's incredible to watch these things play out. Now, as I say that, the market is, of course, being cleaned up. Uh, certain things are being corrected that were not correct in the early days of the market. But you know, don't judge it too hard because, look, the regulators still haven't acted. There's still not clear rules. So when crypto started with, with the Bitcoin and then altcoins and then exchanges, the regulators were nowhere to be found. 
So you had like Binance and so forth at one point may not have been doing KYC AML. They are doing it now. And that's why they had to pay that fine, but they're still going to be operating in business. Well, one of the sponsors and promoters of Binance through a paid partnership, of course, was Cristiano Ronaldo, and he's getting sued. So uh, some folks here trying to do a cash grab, trying to go after Ronaldo. And, and look, this is obviously you know bullshit. It's like I saw someone tweet today that uh, we should probably sue Ronald McDonald for promoting uh, McDonald's and making us fat, right? <laughs> so this is a nonsense that's going on. But let me give you the details. Global football star. Cristiano Ronaldo is facing a lawsuit filed in a Florida district court on November 27, 2023, for promoting Binance. The plaintiffs, Michael Sizemore, Mikey Vandara, and Gordon Lewis, claimed they suffered losses because Ronaldo promoted the exchange. The platform is excused or accused of not undertaking proper anti money laundering measures. Moreover, the exchange has or was recently asked to pay U.S. authorities $4.3 billion in settlements. So this is BS. Now, FTX, I understand that if you wanted to go after FTX, sure. But even so, it's hard because, you know, Steph Curry and Tom Brady and those folks were um, just sponsors. They were paid uh, to promote. So it wasn't like they they were, you, you had to still do your due diligence when you use these platforms. You still have to do your research, right? You can't go blindly lose a pla uh, user platform. So I don't know what money they're talking about they lost. Like Binance is still operational. And BNB is still in the top 10 of crypto currencies. So I don't know what the hell they're trying to do here. But, you know, it, it's, I think, a, a cash grab, in my opinion. Now, we got some other Binance news, and that is Binance is going to delist and end support for its BUSD stablecoin in December 2023. I think we all saw the writing on the wall for this when the NYDFS shut down the issuance of BUI, BUSD excuse me, by Paxos, which was the one that was managing it. Uh, I think we saw that this was coming, that this stablecoin was not going to last, and it was part of the whole takedown of Binance as being the top exchange. The Wall Streeters are not going to let Binance run the biggest exchange in the world. and They don't have a cut. They're not getting the billions of dollars like Binance and Coinbase have been getting. Um, and especially, uh, look, a, a stable coin, which they they are, is far removed from any of type of control, right? And transparency, which I get because you have USDT and they're doing like uh, transparency reports now. You have USDC, which is regulated with uh, Circle. So the writing was certainly on the wall for this one. Now, folks, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great platform that I've been using since 2018. They have over 260 plus cryptocurrencies. And folks, they are reserved. So they are a secure platform to use. You can review their audits. You can check that your funds are not being commingled or lent out or anything like that. They are backed up one-to-one -one on all funds. And uh, they have all the top cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. You can also trade precious metals on this platform. They're available in over 150 countries. They have a great app. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Well, folks, we got a new applicant joining the Bitcoin spot ETF race, and this is Pando. Yes, I've never heard of Pando <laughs> too. Uh, though, those of you listening in Europe, you know, if you, have you heard of Pando? I have not. I don't know who these guys are. But Nate Garachi highlighted here, we have a late entrant into the spot Bitcoin ETF race, Pando, who already offers crypto ETPs in Europe. So very interesting. Here's what Eric Balkanis of Bloomberg had to say regarding this news. More questions than answers. Where have they been for the last three months? Why bother at this point if they make the January 10th crew? What does that say about fair play and even society as we know it? And what exactly is a pando? So I think they're trying to throw their hat in the ring here because they recognize an approval is coming soon, right? Uh, well, the Bloomberg folks have been saying they think early January, 90% chance that we get an approval of these Bitcoin spot ETFs multiple ETFs being approved at the same time. Uh, folks, it's going to be amazing. BlackRock, you got Kathy Woods, ARK Invest, uh, some of the biggest names, uh, Van Eck as well. I'm actually going to be interviewing G Gabor Gerbox, who I've had on the podcast before. He's at Van Eck next week. Um, and we're going to talk about this and what their you know game plan is for this. And uh, I've, of course, had Bitwise's Matt Hogan. They're also in the, in the race here. 
folks, uh, it's amazing. And once the Bitcoin ETFs get approved, you're going to have all coin ETFs. We already see the applications for Ethereum spot ETFs getting pushed through. As you can imagine, uh, XRP, Cardano, and so forth. Now, one could argue you know, a lot of folks are going to wait for the Ripple lawsuit to be fully wrapped up before they file for that. But we know it's, it's it's just a matter of when, right? Not if, but when. So very bullish news. Incredible to see everybody trying to throw their hat in the ring here. Now, here's some more bullish news. Crypto custody firm Copper launches institutional trading platform for tokenized securities. Um, we're seeing tokenization uh, be a big theme for a lot of these Wall Street companies. I mean, BlackRock's Larry Fink uh, has been saying that tokenization is the future of finance, and that is everything on the blockchain, all the stocks, the commodities, all these assets on the blockchain, fractionalized, trading 24-7 in a global market. No more opening and close bell of the stock market. That's that's long gone, folks. We're headed into a new era. Um, yes, it's still around. I know I'm, <laughs> I'm saying it's long gone, but my point is that it's it's a foregone conclusion that you know these things are going to come to an end. We are headed to a new, new world. And uh, it's going to have a lot more inclusion. A lot more people will be able to invest in certain stocks and assets, real estate, fractionalized real estate that they couldn't even touch uh, because you know they're not accredited or they don't have enough funds, right? Now they can buy a small fraction and share in the wealth uh, appreciation of those um, assets. So uh, it's amazing what's coming. So uh, let me give the details here. Crypto custody firm Copper on Wednesday launched a new digital assets broker platform for institutional trading in the United Arab Emirates. Called Copper Securities, the platform combines a suite of blockchain-based financial and custodial services with securities financing and payments applications to follow in the next 12 months. According to the press release, the new platform will be integrated with Copper's custodial partners, providing access to financial instruments in over 90 markets across the globe. So see what's happening here, guys. A lot more markets being opened up um, and and. Like I said, the money coming in from everywhere. The new platform offers institutional investors access to tokenized securities, allowing traders to leverage blockchain technology and smart contracts to manage traditional instruments such as equities. Copper Securities said that it seeks to address inefficiencies and high operating costs in traditional market infrastructure. Here's a quote. Clients using Copper's ecosystem will benefit from from automated processing of corporate actions, settlements, top-ups, and rebalances, the firm said. Folks, so you may hear about this and like, well, how can I benefit from this? Well, the fun part starts when we learn about which blockchains they're tokenizing on and where you can hold the respective token of said blockchain. So I hope you understand how that's game-changing and that in the past, we were not able to enter here and enter and benefit from this, right? Now we can, because they're using, many of them are using public blockchains. It may be a private as, uh, aspect of that blockchain, right? Which is fine, but it's still building that's happening on the blockchain, uh, adding to the transaction and the valuation of the blockchain, right? Metcalf's law, more network participants and more stronger the network becomes, more valuable it becomes. And of course, the, the trickle down effect of the valuation on the native token. That's where you can hold that native token and benefit from the rise of the value. So uh, this is how I'm looking at it. This is what's happening. This is why crypto is game changing, folks. Um, now, interesting news here from Ledger. Ledger, the hardware wallet. It's a hardware wallet I use to secure my funds. If you don't have one, check out the link in the description. Don't keep all your crypto in the exchanges. Move it off and uh, store it on a Ledger wallet. Uh, they had a little issue here with uh, XRP tokens. Um, nothing lost, but here's the update. They said, hey, XRP users, we have detected an issue with our backend services for XRP. Our team is on it and looking for a fix. In the meantime, you may not be able to add an XRP account in Ledger Live or send XRP from Ledger Live. Rest assured, this has no effect on your funds. You cannot connect your Ledger Nano to XRP Toolkit to view and manage your XRP until we push a fix. Now, this has since been resolved. So I just want to let you guys know it has been fixed. It has been fixed and so no one panic. So uh, it's good that we're getting this transparency. They put out a full article. So if you want to read more about that, you can go check it out. But like I said, Ledger is a good hardware wallet. That's what I personally use to back up my crypto. 
and to self custody. So I don't, if an exchange goes out of business or has some problem, I'm not affected. I have my funds backed up. I have my private keys backed up and all that jazz. Now, here's a interesting funding news coming out today. We're seeing more crypto companies raise a ton of capital. So cross-chain protocol Wormhole closes $225 million funding round at a $2.5 billion valuation. It's a lot of money, folks. Some of the investors included Brevin Howard, big name there, folks. Coinbase Ventures, Multicoin Capital, Jump Trading, Parify, Dialect, um, Borderless Capital, Arrington Capital, that's Michael Arrington and others, according to a statement. Here's a quote. Uh, we are ecstatic to bring more new and groundbreaking products to market as we head into next year and look forward to continuing to support our ecosystem of developers who are building with our tools every day to expand their businesses and build great experiences for users. Wormhole Foundation Chief Operating Officer Dan Reeser said in a statement, Along with the funding news, Wormhole launched an independent technology company called Wormhole Labs, which came out from Stealth and has become Wormhole's core contributor. So this is interesting. Um, Wormhole's investor Jump Trading rescued the bridge when it lost 120,000 ETH in a February 2022 hack, replenishing the $325 million in stolen funds uh, soon after the exploit on November 17th. Jump opted to make Wormhole its own separate business, the block previously reported. So this is a lot of capital being flowed into here from some big names, folks. So it seems like Wormhole, despite the issue they had, um, they are looking to build some great technology for crypto. Now, um, it's funny, I should have followed up this news after the copper news. Republic lists profit-sharing digital security on Avalanche. Accredited and non-accredited investors worldwide will, will be able to purchase the notes starting on December 6 on US regulated trading platform INX. So this is a clear example. They're taking a public blockchain avalanche, which has a native token AVAX, and they're going to be doing uh, you know, profit sharing type products and things like that. But even if you don't participate in Republic's whatever thing, you can hold the AVAX token and benefit from the adoption, folks. So I hope I hope I'm I'm conveying this well that the opportunity is incredible that we have and, and never throughout history could we have done this and part and be um, you know be able to benefit from this. So crypto investment platform Republic will list its profit sharing digital asset the Republic Note on the Avalanche blockchain via the U.S. regulated trading platform INX. The note listing will be available to KYC non-accredited and accredited investors worldwide on December 6th. According to David Schack, the head of marketing at Republic, the Republic note is backed by over 750 private companies and assets in Republic's portfolio, including SpaceX, Dapper Labs, Klarna, and Klarna, just to name a few. Here's a quote. This means that companies that have raised capital on Republic's retail investment platform or from Republic Capital, our venture arm, become part of the note portfolio, Shaq said. Any users who purchase a Republic note are entitled to hold a share of the dividend pool that grows when a Republic portfolio company has a profitable exit event. That's That sounds pretty interesting. I'm going to have to check this out, right? Obviously, you got to do your research, right? Um, aside from financial incentives, the Republic note holders will also have access to community benefits, Shaq said. Uh, quote, Earlier this month, we held a note-gated community event at Republic's NYC headquarters office, and there are plans for other note-gated experiences at events like South by Southwest, Eat Denver, etc., he said. The note has received over $30 million in pre-sale participation from early investors and users, including NASPERS, Binance, and Avalanche's Foundation's Vista program. Beyond the pre-sale round, an open round with limited availabilities are also open to early Republic users, where an estimated 5,000 investors have already participated. Folks, very, very interesting. Um, and here they talk about Algorand as well, you know, under what's next. It says, Shaq explains that its decision to launch the Republic Node and Avalanche is aligned with the company's technical strategy noting that the company continues to hold a close relationship with Algorand, but Avalanche's flexibility and customization were necessary for taking the note to the next phase of growth, including a specified subnet that is planned for next year. Folks, once again, even if you don't participate in Republic's note and investing in it, right, 
you can benefit by holding the AVAX token. And if they do something with Algorand, holding the Algo token. So this is where, uh, once again, incredible opportunity. And I have to say, Avalanche has been getting a lot of adoption lately. And, and one of the biggest news that came out just about a month ago was JP Morgan plugging in Avalanche into their tokenization project. I think Citigroup also mentioned something about this. So I'm looking to possibly add some more AVAX to my portfolio. I have some AVAX tokens, but um, I'm going to be buying some dips, folks. And that's a bet. That's not financial advice. This is, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. You know, do your own research, right? Um, but one of the things you want to look at when you're looking at a coin, one of the things on the checklist now is that it's getting adoption from real companies in the real world, doing real things, right? So this is pretty incredible adoption here. Um, and the folks at Avalanche, I know they also have a partnership with Amazon Web Services. But uh, you know that's something you guys go research if you want to add more AVAX to your portfolio. I'm not telling you to. Do your research. Um, not financial advice, of course. That's the news, folks. Let me know what you think. Please hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, hit the five-star rating on the podcast platforms. Thank you for watching and listening. Please subscribe to my free email newsletter. Follow me on X, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn. All the links will be in the description. Thank you, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.